fake LEGO minifigures often get a terribly bad rep, as I'm sure you've seen in one of the many cursed LEGO minifigure videos on YouTube. Don't worry, I haven't sold my soul to the devil just yet. This isn't one of those videos, although there are some pretty cursed looking figures coming up. Bruh. In fact, there are some really good quality manufacturers out there, and if they were printing on genuine LEGO parts, they could make a fortune on the custom market. Now I'm sure you're thinking tech, why did you spend $250 on fake Lego? You could have bought like, what, a third of a Venator for that? Wow, I could have bought some decent sets with that money. You're right, I am an idiot. But there are a few reasons why I bought so many fake figs, and before you question my decisions and leave, could you please smash that like button and hit subscribe? That'd be hugely appreciated. And if you stay to the end, I'll show you this super cursed molded Star Wars animal I bought too. One of the main reasons I've been buying so many fake minifigures is to eliminate the chance of some of my most expensive figs from getting stolen when I display at a LEGO convention. Luckily I've not experienced this firsthand, but I spoke to some people that have and I don't want that anxiety when at a show. Okay, so these figures actually take quite a while to make because you literally have to assemble everything and honestly my fingers are starting to hurt. I just went through and picked a ton of characters that I'm likely to use at a convention and I think most of them are passable. I mean, most of them. I think most of them would do for a convention. It seems it's socially acceptable within the LEGO community to use certain custom elements such as helmets and weapons. And whilst I do think it's an interesting discussion on when custom turns into knockoff or fake, we won't get into that today. Some of these parts will be used simply to upgrade figures with more detailed molds. Like this Mando helmet. The molded details are far better than even LEGO's most recent improved printed version. It's a real shame LEGO doesn't decide to go that extra bit further on such big characters like Mando and give a specific mold. It's hardly going to be a poor investment over the years with the amount of times they'll reuse it in sets. I did buy quite a large amount of generic Mandalorian figures as I one day hope to extend on the Mandalore Palace mock I did a while back and do a full scale Siege of Mandalore. Mandalorian figures, especially the new Mandalorian Loyalists and Darth Maul style Super Commandos are incredibly expensive and I just can't justify spending a ridiculous amount of money to populate a mock at the scale that I'd like to achieve. Having said that, I bought a ton of fake 332nd figs before we got the battle pack, so that was a colossal waste of money. There's also some great variation you get by having slightly different figure designs, as rarely all Mandalorians, even ones from the same clans, have identical armor, so it'd be nice to get that mix by adding these figures in. With the rise of Grandpa Clone Customs and their custom 501st name characters in Star Wars LEGO's 501st Troopers, it's becoming more likely for me to want to do a mock with them all in. Most of my mocks that I build generally end up being displayed at a convention, and even more so than my LEGO figs, I really don't fancy leaving them out to get pinched. I have to say, these prints do look really good on these figs. There are certainly some knockoff clones that look horrific, but these are passable. The cloth pieces really aren't great though, and I'm not a fan of the armor torso piece they've given Cody. Luckily though, they do print the torso underneath, so you can just yeet that in the bin. Now, if you haven't already dipped out for my mass consumption of anti-LEGO products, this might just send you packing. There are some custom figures I want to attempt to make where at best case, I would just remove the printing and paint on the details, or worst case, cut, drill, or sand down parts. The LEGO purists right now are screaming. A couple of the characters that I'd like to make is the Twi'leks Quinn and Zan from The Mandalorian Season 1. I want to take these Aayla Sakura head tails, remove some of the prints, and maybe even have to sand down the edges back so they don't drop in front of their eyes. I can't justify spending like $15 each on the official parts just to vandalize them like that. I also really want to make the Kamenoa mini doll that was a fake league from a few years back. A large part of the community agreed that the mini doll proportions work well for this species, so I'm looking forward to giving it a shot, but I would have to do some major reshaping of the head mold to have it fit on a mini doll torso. So this is my entire fake figure collection. I'm sure all these figs will come in useful and they'll serve their purpose someday. And quite honestly, I don't think they look all that bad. Okay, so this one is actually cursed. Maybe I will change the title of this video. I think it's fair to say that LEGO's ABS plastic quality is far superior to these fake figs, and their tolerances on both moulds and prints are more refined. However, if you're after some highly detailed minifigures that look good on display due to the print quality, or want to densely populate a mock without seeking a mortgage advisor, these aren't a terrible option. Oh, and as promised, look at this blurg. It's way too big and completely out of scale. That's the last time I trust AliExpress. 